So, yeah, I feel like the Disruptor was a good pick overall, as well as this. And wouldn't you know it, the There's first the Doom to come through. And uh, it's coming out preemptively before any of Savage's heroes. But you would have to say, none of these three heroes are going to be that one that straight out carries the game. So it's very clearly a response, kind of like what we were talking about before, to Motivate Trust style, where they just put everything onto Jackie. I'm sad that this is going to be a Cuckoo Call Doom, not a Call Doom. Doom. Yeah. I like Call's Doom. It's one of his best heroes, if his, if not his best. I'd say his best is Lena. Lena is... Yeah, okay. Oh, everyone's best mid-hero is Lena. Carl's Lena is, like, <laughs> the best in the well, world. Well, if think. it's so good, why did he lose to Obi Neon with it? Dan yeah, Danog. Yeah. They had you a better... That was that the Tinker game? Do you want the draft mm. for it? I was on a plane at the time, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I have the excuse. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, Obi Neon had Bane, Tinker, Mars, Rubik, Morph against he their Razor, Lena, Ogre, Enchant, and Medusa. Yeah, so they didn't have any kind of ways to get on the, the Tinker. It was Doesn't just matter, he lost with Lena. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen him lose with Doom. Oh, okay. Well, the Razor's actually something a little different, right? Like, we don't know 100% where it's going to be played. Like, it doesn't really feel like a Jackie style of hero, but it's also not anywhere near as much punished by the Doom, right? As long as you get the static link off, you're pretty happy. Like, you can at least have some sort of impact in a fight. All you need to do is continue to run at people. I guess you don't have any, like, heal or save or anything like that at the moment with your current supports, but it doesn't feel terrible in either the position one or three roles. This is a walk forward and never look back draft from yep. a bit trust. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I didn't, yeah. It doesn't matter if you're getting Doom because Doom is like, okay, I doomed you. Now you've respawned and you're going again. Mm. Um, it fits Motivate style, right? I said they need to finish this game in like 30 minutes and don't give T1 the chance to have their late game decision making come into the equation. Wasn't the point of T1's whole like drafting style, at, at least at TI, they were the poke and, and hold t uh, team. Like yeah. The reason their timers went up is because they were so good at just like p drawing out games. Like... With a weaver and a puck, that's already two heroes that are exceptional at yep. cutting waves and, and shoving side lanes and making the game really awkward to play. Mm -hmm. no, I, I agree with you. That is, that is a big part of what gave them good success, top eight at TI. But uh, well, we're looking to ban out some of those bigger hyper carries that they did make the space for for 23 Savage, the PL, the Morphling, removed from the pool. And we're not going to see a Brood Mama or the Lena come out here. A little bit surprising, honestly, with the Lena, don't you reckon? With that uh, ban coming through? I guess, like, they don't have insane gap close. I think they just want to give Puck the best lane yeah. possible mid. I'm trying to, like, suss out on Merve Trust where they're putting their heroes because Queen of Pain and Spirit Breaker could both go off lane mm. or four or mid or whatever. They could do literally anything. Kind of like, let's just counter this PA and see what we can do. I mean, Razor kind of already counters the PA. Yeah. If he can just stag link her in a fight, I mean, hi he's going to be priority number one for mm. Dooming then. Oh, of course. You just need to make sure you... I mean, the vision advantage should be in Motivate's favor, though, right? Like, you've got a Spirit Breaker, you've got a Disruptor, and I still feel like it's a good Kunker game, you know? You can just use X Mark as that extra layer of we're just going to continuously run at you, low cooldowns, especially on the ultimate. Like, it, it feels like the style that's going to work well for them. And Fearless has been playing it pretty damn well lately. Yeah, I would definitely like another hero like that that just makes the team, like, sturdier as a whole. Mm. Since they are running this high temp... Do, do they have... Uh, it's they just something that brings Puck back into a potential Static Storm as well, right? Which is always... Yeah, it I feels like they're lacking a little bit in the form of stuns. I was checking to see if they wanted to pick Beastmaster, but Beastmaster into PA kind of sucks. Yeah. Elaine is super annoying. Mm-hmm. I don't think you could lane against him plus Weaver or Lion even. Give me that conquer. That's all I want. Yeah, just pick something that can go fight hard with the Razor and stuff. Like they'll just like lane and then they'll like come together as a ball at like fifteen to twenty minutes and mm -hmm. then try and fight for like Roshan. Something that could give them Rosh would be really nice. Maybe Slardar. Mm, yeah, it's not terrible. Dragonite. That works too. And that gives them some tower push. Like, ways to actually take objectives is what they needed. Mm. I know that both of you were pitted against each other in a debate against uh, for Motivate or T1. So it's going to happen again. Which team are you guys liking the look of and why? Mm. I mean, I, I like Motivate's draft. I feel like the DK is a good matchup against the Puck. I feel like Razor 
as long as you've got good vision, it's going to have a good time. But uh, like the, the key dependencies for Motivate's draft is they need to get good vision and not get it dewarded to enable their team fight. And you need to get good value out of the Elder Dragon form. So I kind of feel like it's just, it, it comes down to positioning in game to enable that to happen. I feel like 23 Savage is just going to have a really hard game. Mm. So, oh, I really you, like. You seem so, so hesitant hard. to want to say motivate. You no, know, because I like both. I did like. I generally see like a, a game where motivate trust initiate. I think it's really hard for T1 to play, and yep. a game where T1 initiate. I think it's really hard for motivate trust to play. So, mm. it's. I feel like it's definitely on the supports. The support, yeah, the supports, the vision game. Who gets to start first? All this, yeah. It's yep. Look out for At Boombui and Q, for sure. Yeah. They're going to be the ones that decide the tempo of this game. If T1 win a single fight near Roche Pit, is over, though. T1 have the way better Roche and Billy. Yeah. Well, apart from those conditions, it does seem that it is a little bit up in the air in which team our panelists think are going to take this. But we are going to head over to our casters, Gods and Lizard, to let us know how this game goes. Oh, it's okay. I, I I'm sorry too. Oh hey, everybody, we're live. Apparently, we came to us. Um, it's time now for T1 versus. Motivate Trust Gaming. <laughs> Sorry, we've just been trying to deal with some last minute technical issues here on the broadcast as we are indeed live with our second Division 1 series of the day. My third series of the day. We had some Division 2 earlier today. Uh, sorry about that, didn't know what coming to me, but um, we're here. We're, we've got two drafts, we've got two teams, and this is an important match for both these teams. T1 who have major aspirations, Motivate Trust. They had mo major aspirations, but after a loss early this week to Fnatic, their pathway to get to the major is a little bit tricky. Um, I believe I will be joined by Lizard. I'm not sure if he is in here just yet. Uh, we're trying to get him in later on. Um, how are you doing, Lizard? <laughs> anyway, sorry guys, it sounds like uh, it is just me for the time being. Uh, you know, I can hear Lizard, you guys can't. I, I apologize, I'm keeping them all to myself. Uh, but for now, um, while production uh, worked their magic to bring Lizard back into the cast, it will just be yours truly. Um, as we try and figure out exactly uh, what's going on. But here, nothing too crazy, it looks like, in terms of pig spans and whatnot. Um, Dragonite, perhaps the one kind of out there pick, although I've seen a Dragonite here or there. Um, as we will see, Massa playing an offlane Queen of Pain, so feeling like the Dragonite mid against the Puck of Carl is going to be the answer, rather than sending the Queen of Pain there against the Puck. They want to go for that more kind of hero to uh, hero matchup, um, and we'll see how things unravel here. So early on. Looking at what these lanes are going to look like. Spirit Breaker going to be playing in the support role. We've seen a lot of this core Spirit Breaker. Not something that's going to be making an appearance here. As Zephyr going to go Shikuchi on in. Look to steal a Bounty Rune. Unsuccessful at that. And the two teams will kind of head on out to their lane. So, uh, Cuckoo playing Doom. Something I think with T1 that they're kind of known for is this very greedy style of offlane. Often we see Cuckoo kind of last picking his hero. And uh, playing these more kind of farm oriented offlaners. Trying to put the team on, you know, quote unquote, his back, so to speak. But definitely a team that likes to prioritize getting all three of their core players a lot of farm. And Doom, one of the best heroes to farm in that offlane with. So as a result, the supports here is like uh, the Weaver of Zephyr, the Lion of White Modern. There's going to be a lot less farm and a lot more pressure for them to be the ones making those plays. So we'll see how that works for T1 here as Motivate Trust. Going to be the ones maybe having to set the tempo a bit more. No hard carry on their team. They've gone for the Razor in the safe lane here. We saw last game scale pretty well. Uh, when you get the right items, you can get up to that BKB refresher and have the double BKB, double Eye of the Storm. Definitely something that you have to kind of fear and respect uh, the late game prowess of. But compared to what T1 have, it's not something that's going to be able to solo carry this game. So taking a look at some of these side lanes here, just going to be a Disruptor paired up with a Razor down bottom. And we'll see Doom and Lion going up toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. 
over in the mid lane. It is going to be that Puck versus Dragonite matchup, something that traditionally very DK favored. Uh, so far, DK doing well, holding his own. It's down bottom, though, where the Static Link putting some early pressure on Cuckoo. It's going to force an Earth Spike from the Lion to help bail him out, help get him back to safety. And you can kind of see here some of the problems maybe with that greet is going to be the constant pressure in the laning stage. A hero like Razor is so good at zoning people away. Top lane, though, meanwhile, Q gets gone on 23. Savage gets a first blood double kill. He almost paid for it with his life, but he gets both kills and doesn't die in the process. Is there a salve for him? It doesn't look like it, but just the tango is maybe enough to keep him in this lane. Great start for T1 here in the top lane. We were going to go look to suicide in the tower. Zephyr is going to die. They're going to get some experience, it looks like, for it. So Spirit Breaker gets level 2. Leeches the experience from the suiciding Weaver who just throws himself at the tower. And they want 23 Savage as well. He's under his own tower. If he can buy out here, it could be fine for him. I think he knows he's going to die. Doesn't lose much gold. He mostly had reliable gold there, so he's going to get a chance to reset his Q himself. Gets very low from the tower shots. So a lot of aggression in this top lane. It's the mid lane where not much is happening. Bottom lane, kind of a harass trade. But top lane, a bit of a bloodbath so far. So we'll see. As mentioned, guys, we will be trying to get Lizard back into the cast as soon as possible. Just a few uh, issues getting his uh, microphone picked up, but uh, for now. Just me, as we walk our way through this very aggressive top lane. Charging in is Q. The Swarm Beetle is on him, and both Queen of Pain and Spirit Breaker struggling to keep themselves in this lane. 23 Savages decided, hey, it's time to get join the party. Once again, there's a kill opportunity, and one more Stifling Dagger will finish off the kill on Q. Mass is going to be careful. He's got a lot of one charges in the blink, so he should be fine here. Just trying to bait out those one charges is Zephyr, but looks like he's going to get a chance to salve up. And no harm, no foul for the Queen of Pain, but the Spirit Breaker, not so lucky. Back at mid, Dragon Knight continuing to farm. 18-4 to the Puck, 15-3. and three. Puck a little bit better at farming some of these small neutral camps, so even if DK has a slightly better time in the lane, we could see Puck maybe kind of use that wave clear potential in the neutral farming to kind of catch up and pull back ahead of the Dragon Knight. But Dragon Knight, not really a hero that you're picking in the mid lane to be that big farmer. He's just there to pressure the tower. Be that body that can defend towers as well. If Puck ever rotates and tries to go for a gank, pick up a rune of some kind and make a play, then you're going to see this DK just pop that ultimate and just chip away at the T1 mid tower. Even when Puck's there, you can easily harass this tower, force T1 to maybe rotate in supports just to stop this DK from slowly whittling away and taking an early T1 tower. We'll see rune battles coming. Kyle knowing he can't really beat a DK. So he's going to just go for the top one, jaunts his way up there and... Has hit level 5. A bit ahead of the DK who's going to need this last creep wave to get there, but that's a bit lame to say. A lot of, lot of farm being traded, nothing too crazy in terms of kill openings and less supports are rotating in, When you, particularly when it's a DK battle. Sometimes you see the spirits. We saw last game with the Ember versus the Invoke, a lot more kills. Top lane though, Zephyr goes in with the one charges, wants to get the Queen of Pain, but a blink out just in time. As Master was looking for those first earn, earn charges, but unfortunately he doesn't find them. Both, all four heroes in this top lane, incredibly low. But it doesn't look like for the time being any are going to go down. If Q on Master show here, they could die. Charge him from Q, going to cancel the sound, but he got most of the heal from it already as Zephyr. He's low, he's going to be careful. He catches at the bug on two though. And Queen of Pain just going to blink back to the safety of the tower, getting the earn charges along the way. So perhaps happy with the support trade just to get those earn charges. Makes his lane a little bit easier when he can just heal himself up and also apply additional pressure if there's a kill opening for him. Queen of Pain, though, only 11 last hits so far. So while they've been trading kills okay, the farm heavily favoring the PA over the Queen of Pain for now. But when you look at the PA's farm, 18 CS, not the, not the best CS score for a, a carry hero. That's something that T1 are maybe going to have to kind of talk about is just, is this top lane going how we want it to? Charge towards the mid lane. Can they get this puck? The dragon tail gonna set things up here. The puck has a waning rift, but gonna throw out the dream call. Cancel the charge and catch the DK near the tower. Not under as White Mon TP's in has an earth spike and a hex, and they're gonna take up the DK. Too aggressive from Gacha Boy. As Fearless is gonna be regretting that move there. Perhaps the call from Q was to go, 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 but both supports from T1 rotating in to make sure things go okay. Jack Poison Boom Bell down in this bottom lane. They've uh, mostly had a pretty stable laning stage, but Doom not really getting pressured out. So despite having that Razor versus Doom, they haven't been able to 
keep the Doom away from his farm. The charge up top is not really going to be followed up by too much. The three points in Shadow Strikes is, is annoying for 22 saps to kill with, but he says, well, you go on me, I go on you. Gets a kill on Q Spirit Breaker with ease and may force Master just to blink on out. He blinks away, luckily. Oh, is he far enough away? The Stifling Dagger, he's going to be close. He gets the blink in. May go down to this scream if he's not careful. 23 Savage is ticking. Is that may just have to deny him? I believe he's going to have to go for that deny. He gets one more creep. Oh, no! He wandered! What are you doing? <laughs> okay, there we go. They still got the deny. Almost messed it up a little bit there. And they will. Trade... Well, not really trade kills in the end. It's the PA being denied means no goal going away. Of motivate trust in the end here. So, a nice little victory for T1 in the top lane. Back in the bottom lane. Just Doom doing Doom things. Farming up a storm. Top of the net worth. Having a great time. And in mid, it's uh, a lot of pressure on this DK. Fearless has got to be careful with this DK positioning, considering how low he is. And with the Weaver rotating in, they've got a lot of nuke damage. White one's showing up as well. And once again, it's the double support rotation to get these kills. There is a charge looking for a counterplay here. White one getting low will go down, but Carl coming back in with another orb and waning rift. He's gotten the second kill for his team. As T1 constantly coming mid with the supports. And I talked about this DK versus Puck being a bit of an idle, dull lane other than the support rotations. And it's the support rotations that have swung it the way of Carl. A hero like DK, his job is to kind of just keep pressuring that tower. And that's a full health tower in the mid lane. He's yet to right click at once. Zephyr getting a D ward may die in the process, but gets the time lapse off just in time. And they've got no detection for him. So that gets the D ward off and gets out of there okay. And may even secure a room for his team here. There's Narcan rune up top. He may just have to stop the DK from grabbing it and does just that. Full health DK with strength treads. You're not getting that kill, they say. And T1 will back off. Look to reset and just happily walk away with their 2k gold lead. Eight minutes in and T1 already just kind of playing the map better, winning the economy battle, also getting the kill. It's not just a matter of out farming them and, um, you know, getting more CS. It's also these kills that they're getting, particularly on the mid lane. Two deaths to Dragonite's name. He's the most farmed hero on their side, but it could be a whole lot better for him if not for those deaths. For now, Jackie, we'll see what his Razor looks to go into. Does feel like this is not how he would have hoped this lane would have gone. The Razor and Disruptor just unable to really do as much as you would hope to against a hero like Doom. The Razor usually feasting on these melee off laners, but top lane, they've gone in with a Blink Strike. They want the Queen of Pain. Is the Hex going to be enough? The charge may just save his life. Master tries to turn and go for a Sonic Wave, I believe. Maybe just needed to Blink out there. And now Q could be in some trouble as well. As 23 Savage with the Treads plus Orb of Corrosion is just wreaking havoc in this top lane. Q gets fingered. Nine minutes in and White One's hit level six on Lion. Glimpse back under the tower with a kinetic field. That should be the death of Zephyr. If he gets out of this one, I'll be a little surprised. And he may do just that. He's got the moves. He's got the time lapse in. Lays down the spray as bottom lane. A lot of action going on as well as Doom's gone in. Has the ultimate as he's... Yep, he's going to have to commit it to make sure they get the kill. The Sonic Wave is... Not going to be enough to kill Carl initially, but the Shadow Strength damage will be. Doom chases down Jackie as they trade Puck for Razor in the bottom lane, but it's top lane where I feel like this PA just continuing to absolutely demolish. Found Boombell. It's just action non-stop here as 23 Savage will get the kill. The DK shows up a little bit too late with the Dragon Tail, and he may be in some trouble now with the two supports here, but can you burst the way through a three points in Dragon Blood DK? Doesn't look like it. Even with the three heroes up here, they do not want to mess with Gacha Boy's DK. So, constant action in multiple lanes. Really, all three lanes. As mid lane's been abandoned for the time being. Puck's going to TP back in and say, yeah, I guess it's time to get some farm. There's also runes, you know. These are kind of useful. Top lane, charge through on two. They want this PA underneath the tower, but the plasma field not going to be quite in range here. The Weaver gets caught by the Nether Strike and will get taken out here. So, offering his own life to help keep the PA safe. We'll see if PA stays up here to try and defend will be tricky to do so against these four heroes from Motivate Trust with the Siege Wagon. It looks like for now, T1 are going to just have to maybe consider letting this one go. It looks like PA is leaving the safety of those trees and with the Siege Wagon up here in the Dragon form, just not a tower they can defend. So Q just charges his way towards the mid lane as Motivate Trust is going to be pretty happy Radiant's having claimed that off lane tower. Something that T1 themselves with the greedy lineup haven't been able to do. Cuckoo, I mean, on the Doom. This is a, that greedy farming off laner just not able to really pressure the tower. 
For those of us just joining us, this is game one of the best of three between T1 and Motivate Trust Gaming. T1 haven't played many series yet. This is actually a postponed series. There were some server issues before the holiday break as T1 looked to continue their winning ways and they're doing it with a very farm PA. Five, two, and five. Your PA's been involved in 10 kills. Uh, but yeah, this series was postponed before the break with the server issues being rescheduled to now as T1 have only actually played three series in the DPC while several other teams have played as many as five. So let's see if they can continue to find success here. They have lost one series already, though, earlier this week. Dropping one, I believe it was to OB Neon. Definitely a team that, after their success at TI, getting top eight for the SEA region, will have hopes of making it to that first major. As that last major of uh, the previous DPC season, they did so amazingly well at. Right, see if they can... Once again, get a chance to show what they can do on land. So now they've got to get there first. And Motivate Trust standing in their way. We're trying to get Lizard back into the cast, for those of you wondering. And for now, it's just me. Uh, Lizard is around. He's uh, working with production to try to get his microphone sorted. As uh, We should hopefully have him back in soon. But I do apologize as uh, we see what Motivate Trust can do. They're smoked up, but they're not able to make any plays down bottom. And I think they're kind of starting to realize, like, they're winning on kills and also out farming us with a doom. We need to make something happen. Motivate Trust can't feel good about a kind of slow static farming game. As much as they want to maybe hit some of these key item timings, like the Blink Dagger on DK, it's, you know, time's a ticking. This Blink Dagger is going to come out now and it's got to be kind of go, go, go time. No time for Razor to finish a BKB or anything like that. They need to fight. They need to go on T1 side of the map and try and stop this greed from continuing to accelerate the T1 lead. So, we'll see where they go from here. Where that first move might might be made. Should be a smoke there, and yet they have the DK likely leading the way. He pops the dragon form, looking for that blink stun onto Carl. But, they nuke the way, probably kind of revealing where they are on the map, if anything. I think if you're T1, there's a very good chance you had your eyes on that creep wave here. Can Gacha Boy blink to the high ground? His smoke pops, though. They know he's there, and they've probably seen the Blink Dagger as well. Boom Bell puts the ward on the high ground with a sentry, so they get the vision, but they don't quite get the pickoff they were hoping for from that Blink Dagger reveal the Dragonite. They may just have to settle for this T1 mid-tower, and that's something that T1, you've got to imagine, are going to want to hope to defend. They've got pretty good heroes to defend this. The question is, can DK just plop himself on the high ground and attack it? And do T1 have the damage to kill him if he tries to just go for this tower? Massa and Boombell trying to invade that enemy jungle Radiant's a bit and set themselves attack. up. Maybe for a good fight here. Dragonite nearby. Could rotate back in if uh, a fight does break out in this area of the map. It seems like T1 don't want to fight this one with Cuckoo sitting down bottom for now. That could quickly change. An outpost means he can TP right into the middle of this. And if he wants to buy a Blink Dagger, he's almost got the gold to finish off that Blink. Motivate Trust just camping by these cliffs where they've got good vision. But T1 have smoked their way through. They want to make a go of this one, but they don't quite find the initiation they were hoping for. Both teams using these smokes and just slightly unable to connect. So this kind of standoff continues. As Jackie says, enough is enough. I'm just going to go back and use Eye of the Storm to farm some Ancients. He wants to finish his BKB as soon as possible because this game has a feel of a game where it's just about to kind of blow itself wide open with a lot of fights. But not quite at that point yet, particularly with this mid-tier one tower still standing. That's something that Motivate Trust have surely got to have their eyes on. And with next dragon form back up, maybe this time around, Gacha Boy's thinking, we got to get this. We've got a siege wagon. We have dragon form, but they go on the DK. He instantly pops an Invis, breaks the call. He gets doomed up. And he's going to pop like a piñata. As Whitemon throws out the finger and everything. So they commit all their spells, bring down the DK. He's just not tanky enough to be seen in a position like that without the backup. Q goes in with a nether strike, wants Whitemon trying to protect their observer ward, but not going to succeed in doing so. Maybe thinking they can take a fight with all these big ultimates used. No Dream Quill, no Doom, but DK is really the hero that pulls together this Motivate Trust draft, and without him, they don't have that good setup. Spirit Breaker getting low means he can't really easily initiate. 
So that means D T1 attack. get a nice kill, plus they keep that mid Radiant T1 tower alive. That's down to about half health, but it's T1 who continue to pick up a bigger and bigger lead. And with Cuckoo getting close to a BKB and then shortly after the Blink Dagger on his Doom, things can start to look a little bit hairy. As for Motivate Trust, it's all about this BKB timing for themselves. They've got Razors already up, but the DK not having one. And not that close to one is a little problematic for them. It doesn't feel like an item they can wait for. If they just try and farm it up, they're going to, you know, this 4k gold lead quickly turns into a 6, 7, 8k gold lead when you're up against a Doom. So they switch things up. They put Razor on the front lines. He's showing mid. He's the one who's going to pressure the tower. Instead, Gacha Boy is going to lead the way to jump the back lines here. They glimpse back the Doom. They want Cuckoo. He's going to buy out as much as he can towards his BKB, and the Static Storm on the back lines means there's not really much of a counterplay for T1. So Motivate Trust will get a nice kill on the Doom. Plus this T1 tower, hopefully. And a charge down bottom. Spirit Breaker <laughs> actually catching Carl on the charge through. But leading just to some farming for Q. Definitely one of those supports that finds a lot of farm these days on the Spirit Breaker with the damage you get from the charge greater bash. And motivate trust with that tower that really opens up this map for them they'd love to find their way into this dire jungle and keep getting some pickoffs and kills but with dk's dragon form ending this may be time for them to back off particularly with other spells like sonic wave and static storm also on cooldown but they find zephyr here potential glimpse back but he's got a time lapse does zephyr go for the time lapse gotta imagine that's a play here yep he knew without static storm you're not getting that kill and there was no stuns unless the dk got there in time but he was far off so No issues for Weaver there to get out of that gank. And for Cuckoo, he's now completed his BKB on Doom. So what happened in the mid lane, not going to be so easy for Motivate Trust. They don't have the best ways to deal with BKBs. Even with, you know, they've got Nether Strike, they've got Static Link. So it's not bad. But at the same time, these, if he just runs in, Doom doesn't mind being Static Link that much. Like, he's not a hero that cares about his right-click damage. So if you're committing a Static Link onto him, that means the PA can freely enter the fight. So Motivate Trust just kind of falling into this farm game where they're consistently just slightly behind on gold. No way you can really keep up. Battle Fury PA, Midas Doom. These are heroes that are just naturally going to outfarm you, particularly when you've got Razor DK as your cores. But traditionally, you know, quote-unquote boring cores of Dota. You know, no mid player likes playing a DK. No carry player likes playing a Razor. They're the boring heroes that are meant to win their lanes and get the job done, but you don't get to do anything flashy. And for Motivate Trust... Not that they need the flashy plays, but they need to utilize these heroes to kind of at least be active now and take some fights, particularly when they have these ultimates. Line up top is showing, and this could be a quick pick off of Motivate Trust. They go in, but it's a bait. Jackie's going to have to commit his BKB, but if he gets doomed here, there's no TPing out for him. Luckily, the glimpse away means Cuckoo is not going to initially get that Doom off, but Jackie's BKB wearing off could spell trouble for him. He gets caught by the Dream Coil here. The Bullwhip used offensively on him as well, and the right-click damage should be more than enough as 23 Savage shows up to help secure the kill for Cuckoo, who will happily hold on to his Doom. Didn't even have to use it in the end there. The Spirit Breaker was just too far away with that charge. And Gacha Boy on his DK, even with the Dragon Form just backing off. Saying, you know, there's not a whole lot we can do. So once again, it's T1 finding the advantageous kill trades while out farming their opponents. While this PA continues to look scarier and scarier. 23 Savage, more than halfway to a BKB. Bottom tower is under attack. Let's see where he heads off that. Looks like the standard PA stuff. Desolator, Agonims. Q keeping bottom tower alive. May just deny it here. Not the most important tower and taking away the gold. Definitely worth it. As for Motivate Trust, we'll see if they want to make another smoke move of some kind. Disruptor has one with the Queen of Pain. It looks like, yeah, with the DK, they want to make that move. Master kind of shows himself, so I'm not sure what the idea was there, but they're smoking towards that Cuckoo Doom up top, but he's going to BKB, and he's just going to trade up TP out. So this smoke looks like it's destined to not really achieve a whole lot. Maybe get down some wards at best. But the Queen of Pain perhaps revealing a bit of what was going on when she showed mid lane out of the smoke. 
T1 happy just to play this bottom side of the map knowing, okay, they smoke up. Our jungle's not safe. Let's go down bottom. Let's farm our ancients. Let's farm bottom lane. They don't want to fight until at least this PA is BKB. Charge down bottom. Spirit Breaker. Continue to get his farm. He's managed to finish a Shadow Blade. This time around, it's a smoke up from T1. They feel like it's go time. Forget the PA BKB. They want to fight before this one. They feel like Carl with a Blink Dagger on Puck is enough an initiation. Not to mention the Blink on Doom. Cuckoo, that's the big one that they just got. But Boom Bell, he sniffed it out. Motivate Trust have managed to get out just in time to avoid getting caught here. I say that. Just kidding. Boom Bell, he'll tank the gank. Support life. Walked into the wrong neighborhood. And looks like T1 have well and truly made their move into this radiant side of the map. Forcing Motivate Trust down to the bottom part. And with Roshan back alive, it's the perfect time for T1 to make that move because theoretically they can bring in this PA to try and take Roshan. They've got the bugs. They've got some good minus armor. Definitely something that's doable, but you've got to imagine Motivate Trust aren't going to give it to them for free. Spirit Breaker charging on through. Gets caught by a Dream Call. Meanwhile, DK has a BKB. He's going to get forced to use it. Can he find the puck for a Dragon Tail? It looks like there's no good target for him to go on. His BKB is being somewhat wasted here, as is the Razors. As Cuckoo on the Doom. BKB TP out. Blinking from the DK. Got the Dragon Tail on the line, but that's just a support. But Motivate Trust making sure they turn these BKBs at least into a kill. Problem is for them, they don't have the draft that takes Roshan. So while they're here with a slight numbers advantage, they can't just go into the pit and force Roche. Both teams using BKBs there. Other than the PA. So it was, I believe, just the Doom BKB for a couple BKBs on the Radiant side. And Weaver, well, thought he could play around, make some cute little moves. Got caught by the detection and Static Storm was there to make sure they bring him down. Another nice support kill, even if it's just a support. Something that Motivate Trust will be happy with as they clear out some of the Dire Vision. They want to really make sure they either set things up to take Roche themselves or at least contest T1 because I think they realize now that T1 have their eyes set on Roche. T1 make that move thinking they can stop Roche from happening and that's what is going to be the name of the mid game here, Roshan. Who can get it? Who can win that fight that gives you an Aegis early on? A hero like a PA, a hero like a Razor can do so much with an early Aegis. And T1 knowing this, it's smoking up from one fight to the next. DK may walk into this one. He's going to be careful. He's got a BKB, but if they see him, it is daytime. I believe they'll see him in just a second. Blink Hex. Forget BKB when you're up against a lion. Finger being used. Third finger sack. And they've also caught some heroes in the mid lane. Queen of Pain and Disruptor. Two heroes without a BKB getting caught in the Dream Coil. They're ignoring them for now, but the Razor on the front lines with a BKB trying to keep them at bay. Doom is there with a Doom. Starts off with the Infernal Blade. The follow-up damage isn't going to be enough to bring down the Razor. You betcha with the Earth Spike. The Puck goes in as well. Razor, you know, he fought admirably, but it's going to be too little too late. Spirit Breaker with the slowest charge ever. Finally gets out of some of the slows. But it's going to be a... Fourth kill. There we go. Fourth kill. Cuckoo gets the last hit. Killing spree for him. Great initiation coming in. The not perfect time to smoke up. They get the catch. Use that lion blink. Something that perhaps DK wasn't ready for. It was a pretty fresh pickup. And having that insta blink hex meaning, you know, DK ideal scenario gets a BKB off there and tries to run away. I don't think he can BKB TP because of the doom, but he at least maybe buys time for his team to get there. But with the blink hex, he's a free kill. And Puck gets the follow-up kills secured with the, the dream coil. Not going for Roshan, though. T1, feeling like they need to play it safe and slow. Maybe thinking they just don't quite have enough damage until this Desolator comes out. It's not far away for 23 Savage. And that fight it by itself turned this from, you know, a like 6, 7k gold lead into a 10k gold lead. Really put T1 in a very comfortable spot. So not a position where they need to take too many chances. If anything, the, the pressure is on Motivate Trust. They're the ones who have to, you know find some kind of smoke play, make a move. They need to be the ones getting the jump rather than getting jumped on. When you've got a hero like DK, this is not a hero that you want to get initiated. Otherwise, this happens. Suddenly, you're just not getting value in the Earth Spike hitting too. Q could be in trouble as well. The Dream Coil going to catch the Spirit Breaker. Cuckoo going in, trying to finish him off. But the Lion Meemaw has gone down on the T1 side. The chase is there for Spirit Breaker. Weaver gets out of the Static Storm. Puck scored in the middle, though. Can Puck get out of this one? Carl, yep, he can. Gets kind of glimpsed to the side of it, and that's not going to be enough as Jackie... Goes down and Carl wants more. He's got the Witchblade, so he's kind of slowing Boom Bell on the retreat. Blocks his juke through the trees. Waning Rift being right in front of him. And I think T1 are 
surely off of this, I got to imagine going to go for that Roshan. Looks like they are backing off. We yeah, are with Swarm. I mean, they don't need the Dessa with the Swarm. Maybe they just wanted to win that one more fight before they go for Roche. Nice thing that, you know, the sooner you take the first Roche, the faster Roche number two comes out with that free Ag Shard as well. So into the pit they go. Easy Roche. Game one looking very good for T1. They find themselves with a very comfortable gold lead and Aegis. All three cores topping the net worth chart and not much can be said or done by the Motivate Trust side for the time being. Charge mid and for now Motivate Trust probably just going to be in split push mode but they have not got the best heroes to split push or really play these kind of scrappy games of Dota. They also just don't scale particularly well. The Razor got, feeling like he had to go for a Lincoln Sphere to deal with the Doom more than anything. Unfortunately for Jackie, that just means his refresher gets slowed down even more. And that's kind of the item that allows him to be this scary late game threat, having double Eye of the Storm, double BKB. So still a bit of a ways to go before that BKB uh, refresher is going to be there for him. Charge down bottom Q. Just uh, clearing some creeps. As for Motivate Trust, what's the move going to be? It seems like they really don't have a move into the ages. <laughs> and it's T1 who are smoked up. They're the ones who want to make that play. They're the ones who are looking for that kind of killing blow. Even if Not necessarily the GG, but any big kill they can get here and take over the map. Playing offensively, getting those deep wards down, really setting yourself up to have a great late game here. And if they see Masa and get a Blink Hex out, whoo, that was close. Maybe if Lime was in the front. They didn't quite get the vision, but now the charge is coming out on the line. Can they kill Whitemon here? That'd be a big one with the Shadow Blading Spirit Breaker through. The follow-up is there from the Dragonite, but he gets hit by the Earth Spike. They just killed the Lion in time. Spirit Breaker is going to buy back and look to charge his way back into this fight, but Dream Call catching two could be problematic. Luckily, D DK's BKB allows him to get out. The Spirit Breaker charge pushes the Puck. They pull him back into the Static Storm, but the Static Storm's worn off now, so Puck's still alive and still ready to keep on fighting. Carl wants back in. Goes in with the Waning Rift. Another orb going to follow it up to help finish off a triple kill for him. They're not done. They mean business. Jack, boys. He could be next. As Cuckoo going for the body blocks. Pops the BKB just to be on the safe side. He's even holding on to the Doom. Knowing they can get this kill without it. Doesn't want to get too close to a Razor. But he'll happily let his teammates finish off the kill as they get four. Only lose the Lion. I believe it was actually a team wipe because of the Spirit Breaker buying back. So they kill all five. And the buyback was used. Absolute disastrous fight for Motivate Trust. An 18k gold lead about to turn into a 20k one with these towers. And really for, for T1, things looking very grim at this stage of the game. T1 have absolutely destroyed Motivate Trust's morale here. As they find kill after kill. Q thinking he can split push some waves. Gets caught by the Lion and the Puck. And thanks to T1, yeah. Motivate Trust got to be feeling like there's not a whole lot they can do other than just sit back and hope for those like mistakes, misplaced Cuckoo, jump in, breaks the Lincolns, pops the Doom. Boom Belt. Well, oh, sorry, the Lincolns on the, was on the Doom. I think that was a glimpse back that failed on the Doom. Cuckoo just straight up dooming the DK. Saw the Lincolns pop there, yep. It's 23 Savage who can just push high ground with this Lincolns. Doesn't have to worry about the static link as much. T1 feeling like they can get these racks here. Blinking in. Cuckoo looking for that hoof stomp. Not going to happen. Gets glimpsed away. And uh-oh. In deep is 23 Savage. He's got an Aegis, so he'll have a second life. He's holding the BKB for that second life. I don't see an easy way for them to get him a second time. Carl goes blinking on the, the back lines just to make sure of it. Just to secure this racks here. And they'll get the mid lane. Can't get a side lane with the tier 2 towers up. So probably T1 have to either just retreat to one of those side lanes to push them or they just double back and look to re-engage they have got a dream coil but without an ag scepter they can't really lock down these heroes like dk and razor through the axe coil uh through the coil until they have the axe so t1 uh you know going about this methodically one lane at a time they get the mid lane they'll push up bottom maybe even wait for another roshan if they want to with uh you know, three and a half minutes. They've got a bit of a time to wait for that next Roshan, but 
they're in no rush to end this game. They're just continually getting further and further ahead. Definitely a team in Motivate Trust that you don't want to take lightly as well. We've seen what they can do in the SEA region over the years. They had a very good kind of 2019, 2020, you know, when all these online tournaments started happening during the pandemic. They were the kind of the kings of SEA for a little while. But then T1 and now more recently Boom have come along and said, hey guys, wait a second. You guys can win some online tournaments, but when it comes to the, the DPC and these majors, we're the ones who can maybe reign supreme. Blinken, DK stun. They caught Zephyr on the Weaver. They blow him up. They commit a lot of ultimates to do so. And Carl may be looking to punish Supreme and the punk, Puck on the front lines. But with the BKBs used from DK and Razor, they've got to kite these out. And they're going to wear off in a second. Then Carl can go for that Dream Coil. Only gets on the Queen of Pain, but that's maybe enough for him as PA is just shredding through this Dragon Knight. That's a hero that's meant to be tanky and have a lot of armor, but he's managed to just blow up DK. Trade two for two for now with the pop buying back. And I think T1 not even going to go greedy. They're not going to chase, look for more. They're waiting around, trying to push some of these side lanes. Top lane, Jack Boys wants to maybe deny this tower, but won't get a chance to do so as Carl. Doing a lot of damage here and has Cuckoo to back him up. Potential blink of stomp. There we go. That's the set onto the Razor. Gets the Doom out as well onto... Oh, no, hasn't used the Doom. Holds onto it. There we go. Finds Massa. Doesn't want to waste it on Jack Boys. They know they've got that kill without it. And the Queen of Pain suddenly can't blink out. They lost Carl, though. Puff gets nicely sniped on the back lines by the Spirit Breaker. But it's too little too late, it feels like. As it's kind of full-on retreat here. And the DK in the front line is just doing no damage at all. 23 Savage, meanwhile. It's the polar opposite. He's got all the damage he needs. Even against a hero like DK, who's just forced to drag and tail. Breathe fire just to mitigate some of that physical damage. Cuckoo wants in. He wants more. He gets the Blink Infernal Blade. Meanwhile, the PA slices up Q. He's going to get Gacha Boy next. It's a triple kill beyond godlike. And they are just laughing their way to a game one victory. The Kookaburra laughs come out. The GG call. And T1 have secured themselves game number one. Good stuff from them. Very dominant. Very convincing. This was meant to be the series today that maybe looked like it could be good, could be, you know, a close one. And TNC Boom was going to be a stomp, but TNC Boom, two great close games. And so far, Motivate Trust need to find something, pull something together if they want to turn this one around. It is a best of three, though. And uh, we're going to try to bring Lizard back in for game number two, guys. So stick around. We're going to head to a quick break, bring our panel back in, and hopefully Lizard as game number two of this best of three is right around the corner. Stay with us.